So I'm Ken Zellen, and I'm Director of Sales Training for Macintosh Lab. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about yourself and your background in the industry, even though I think we'll have some people tuned in who know a little bit about you. <laughs> well, to make a long story not too long, <laughs> um, I was in high school and a new hi-fi store had opened up in the town I lived in, in New Jersey, uh, Purdue Radio. And I rode my, told my mom I was going to the library. And I rode my bike down to this new store and it was, they had all the top brands at the time, Thorns, Tanberg, Bozak, Advent, Macintosh, Kenwood, Tanberg, I may have mentioned them, Nakamichi. They had all the best brands and I was just overwhelmed. I just thought it was the coolest place in the world. And I ended up hanging out there so much that they eventually put me to work in the service department to keep me out of the sales floor. <laughs> uh, so I wouldn't bug the salesman. That's one approach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I went off to college, to Boston University. And my second year of college, a new store had opened up in Newton, Massachusetts. So a couple of towns out from Boston. Mm -hmm. And I went to visit that store. And the woman who owned the store was absolutely desperate for sales help. Her manager and one of her salespeople had quit. It was a new store and business was slow in a new store. And sure. she, she convinced me to try working there on weekends. <laughs> so I worked there on weekends. What I didn't know was she was dating the president of Macintosh. <laughs> so on Friday nights, he would close up the factory, fly out to Waltham Field um, outside Newton, and he and I and she ran her store on weekends. And I stayed there for seven years. I became manager because she moved to Binghamton and she married Gordon. So she became <laughs> the wife of the president of Macintosh. And I stayed there for seven years and then, um, McIntosh gave me a call one day. There was a store in San Francisco that I had been to. It's a beautiful store, but it was bankrupt. Mm. And they suggested I buy it. So <laughs> I bought a store for $50 down. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Every lawyer, we had to go to three lawyers before someone would put their name on the document because they all said, you're never going to make it. This store hasn't made money for years. And we turned that into the world's biggest Macintosh store. And then the last phase was um, Charlie Randall, president of Macintosh came to me and he said, we really need you to show other dealers what you've done to be successful. I'd like you to um, revamp our training department. And a few years later, I sold my business and that's what I've been doing since. I uh, teach people all about Macintosh and the key thing is how to explain it in simple terms that everyone can understand. That's kind of my specialty is putting complicated things into simple terms. So I've basically had one job my whole life, Macintosh sales since age <laughs> 16. That's, that's not something that we hear anymore. You no. know, that's not common, except for our owner, Ken Paulson. He, yeah. uh, he's had two jobs in his life, paper boy and AV specialist. So, um, you guys are the unicorns of the industry, right? <laughs> so uh, what do you love most about working in the industry after uh, such an illustrious career? Well, I love playing with hi-fi gear. I just do. And when you work in the training department, you get sent new products constantly. <laughs> and Perks. You, have, you get to use them. You don't have to pay for them. You get to play with them. And then you get to send it back and get something new. Awesome. And that's the best part of it for me. I that's love wonderful. it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for a while, I was also consulting with a couple of stores along the way in my path, including um, a store in New York and a store in Philadelphia and a store outside Boston. And I would help all of those stores put their used equipment on eBay for them. And that was just as much fun. I mean, every day I had seven new pieces of equipment to play with and then give back. You never have to buy a thing. 
It's like That's working awesome. for car and driver and being a car enthusiast. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Well, and that's something that, you know, automotive is something that we use to kind of communicate to people, you yeah. know, what, what Macintosh is like, you know, yes. and because some people will say, who would spend that kind of money on this, that, and the other thing? It's like, well, I look at people who spend that kind of money on cars and I'm like, oh, it does take you from one place to another. Why do you spend so much? But it's because it's your passion, right? Sure. Well, people spend a lot of money on collecting little figurines and the king and I plate from. Right. Who was it who did that? The, I forgot the name of the company that the king and I plate collection. Right. You know, hard for me to relate to, you know, some people like to get new stereo equipment every year. Some people like to change their spouse every year. You know, it's probably the lesser of two evils. Sure, absolutely. I, I would definitely take the thing that's not going to yell at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to audio, um, what is one audio product for your own setup that you just can't live without? High power. The first time I ever heard Macintosh was the Doobie Brothers of Toulouse Street. And also they were, I think they were playing Dream Boat Annie at the same, the same listening session. Awesome. Big Macintosh speakers to a big Macintosh amp. And once you've heard that, you can never go back to anything small. You're just hooked for life. Having power, it's like having a, you know, a powerful car, uh, to use that analogy again, it's, it's hard to go back to anything else. So to me, having reserve power in my amplifier, whatever the amp is, that's key to success for me. Because when no one's home, I do like to put on, I have a copy of Doobie Brothers and I like to pretend it's 1973 again. That's, you know, that's something I've been having some of these conversations with our partners and, and some of the themes that I'm seeing come through all of them is that, you know, they love the, the AV community because it's just a different kind of camaraderie and a different kind of connection. And you may not have the same genres of music or movies that you like, but the passion is that, is that, you know, connecting chord through all of it. And, yep. um, and then also that, that transformational and transportational aspect that, you know, the right music coming through the right equipment can just take you back to a completely different place in time. So that's a really yeah, special exactly. element. Yeah, we have our turntable in the office and my other half is playing um, Linda Ronstadt, oh, an old Linda Ronstadt album the, uh, nice. the other day. It was just, it, it absolutely brought back incredible memories. My, my six-year-old got his first turntable from his grandparents about a year ago. And since then he has gotten Dark Side of the Moon, uh, Bowie and yep. uh, the Beatles and the Beach Boys and some of those albums that are just so classic. And, you yep. know, hearing, hearing some of those, uh, especially the Bowie recordings, those are the big ones that he loves and he's yep. actually in for Halloween because of it, so. <laughs> Yeah, Dark Side of the Moon is like the demo disc. That right. That's one of those ones that you have to have. Yeah, in oh. our showroom, if someone's going to give you a demo on vinyl, you know, you're going to see Strat walk in with his bag of vinyl and he's going to sit you down and learn you something. So it's a beautiful exactly. thing. And when, and when Home Theater first came out, it was Top Gun. You had oh, a show absolutely. Top Gun. So Great. fun. So um, if there is any exciting news or product updates from Macintosh that you are able to share and willing to share, you know, briefly, I know you'll touch on some of those things in your upcoming keynote. Yeah, well, one of the most exciting products is the MA12000 integrated amp, which you just got into your store. So Macintosh has built tube gear for years and solid state gear for years. I mean, we built, people say, why are you so good at building mono block amps? Well, because we started in the days of mono. <laughs> <laughs> no one else did. We were there when it was born. We've raised it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, I, I've, I've come up with this term, tubaliciousness. Once music runs through a tube, it gets this warm, relaxed sound to it. And really, engineers don't really know why. And that's why you'll, if you ask 10 engineers, you'll get 10 slightly different answers because we just don't exactly know why. That's why does a certain, like magic come in. 
yeah, why does a certain brand of soy sauce seem to make the food better than another brand? I mean, they don't know, but it does, right? So whether you have tubes in your preamp or your amp, it makes some difference, but once it goes through a tube, you're all set. So what the MA12000 is, it's the product that people have been waiting years for. It's a big amp and a tube preamp and a digital to analog converter and a pair of blue meters all in one box. The Swiss Army knife of Macintosh products. That's it. <laughs> and you know, the first time we combined a tube preamp and a solid state amp was in the MA252, that real retro chrome and black looking little integrated oh, amp. It's beautiful. And sales went crazy when that came out. I think we have and one then, in the front of our showroom. <laughs> sure, exactly. And then Charlie Randall said, you know, this seems to be doing well. Let's build a bigger brother of it. So we came out with the 352 and Charlie didn't know if that would sell as well, because the 252 was a new, less expensive price point for Mac. Well, right. the 352 is outselling the 252. So he said, let's go for broke. Let's take our best integrated amp and put tubes in it. And it's now rapidly becoming our best selling integrated amplifier. So that's a really cool product. So if you guys go big, people go with you. Yes. The awesome. Two more products that I'm particularly fond of because they were my idea uh, were our new home theater processor, the MX100, and we have a matching amp to go with it. And they're very slim line. And when I proposed it to the company, I said, you know, what we need is a product that sacrifices absolutely nothing in terms of sound quality. It has to sound top of the line. But there's a lot of customers who don't need all these legacy jacks. So if you look at the back of our home theater processor, our most popular one, it's called the MX-123. Mm -hmm. And it has hookups for tape decks and VCRs and laser disc players and DVD players. And some people are the type that never get rid of anything. Other people are starting fresh and people starting fresh just have a, a cable box or a satellite dish and that uses HDMI, it's one plug and maybe a PlayStation that uses one plug and maybe a third thing. So I said, let's take off all the jacks that pertain to, to old sources that people are trying to hook up. And that simplified the unit tremendously. Mm -hmm. And we were able to achieve a new lower pr price point with zero sacrifice of quality. So now for anyone starting fresh who might have bought a home theater receiver, an all-in-one, we can give them Macintosh performance separates. Awesome. And I believe those are also rack mountable and have some, some uh, flexibility there as well. Because I know... At Pulse, yeah. we do a lot of, uh, you know, basement theater remodels. We do a lot of exactly. remodels and things like that. And so that that's a lot of flexibility for us as the integrator and to work with our designers to make something that doesn't sacrifice, again, any of the performance, but also, of course, doesn't sacrifice aesthetic because you guys don't make it a, a single ugly thing. But right. something that is rack mountable just it gives us a lot of flexibility. And the rack mount ears are in the box. You don't have to buy them separately. <laughs> and then the amp we have to go with it is unbelievably powerful. Wow. I mean, rated for 250 watts for the front three speakers, but it's four ohm peak power, which is really how what determines how loud it'll play, is over 650 watts a channel. So the thing wow. is, it's, it's not, a, not a baby at all. So those are really exciting. Wow. And using the same technology, we have another new amp and it's an At Atmos amp. So anyone who's bought a home theater before and then comes in and says, I hear about this Atmos where I put four speakers in the ceiling, 
And you used to have to show them a big Macintosh amp, another big one, mm -hmm. and say, we're going to use four of the five channels, and they have to figure out where they're going to put it. This is a real slim line amp that is made to do the extra four speakers that go in the ceiling. Wow. So that's great for anyone who already has a system that might have been state of the art four years ago, and now they just want to make it at most. It, it makes it easy. You don't have to... You don't need a lot of space. You don't need as much money. Yeah. <laughs> it makes everything simple. Yeah. Anytime that we can make upgrades, especially to a brand like Mac, uh, something that is, you know, fairly frustration free and, and right. has a simple plan to it. I mean, that's, that's perfect for our clients. And, you know, we, we get a lot of folks who move into a house that may have an existing system or uh, pieces of an existing system. And the previous homeowner might've taken the things they really wanted and left some other stuff behind. And right. so we're able to get in there and really put some pieces together to make something that the new owner is really going to love. Exactly. Awesome. Um, we also have a new headphone amplifier. Um, oh, yeah. We, yeah. Although I don't want to talk about it too much because we're just taking orders on it. We're not going to deliver for a month or two. Sure. And it and a, there's a few dealers that ordered mass quantities of them. So we know we're going to be back ordered for a while. You guys might have been on that list. But it's a really cool, it's a tube headphone amplifier. And the thing is about this big. It's just cute. I was going to say, I saw it and I thought it was so cute. <laughs> not a word you usually use associated with Macintosh, but it Correct. is cute. <laughs> um, and then we also have, people seem to love the look of the MA252, that retro looking uh, integrated amp. Mm -hmm. So... And a lot of people say, I love that look, but I really want to go for higher performance. We now have a separate preamp and monoblock high power amps to go with it. Mm -hmm. So you can make a whole system that looks like that because there's a lot of people who want to hide their system. There's people who hide their system in the rack mm -hmm. in the basement. Strangely enough, they usually still want our amps with meters even though they can't see them. They're just going to sit, go, go every so often and check in the cupboard and make sure it still looks cool. And then <laughs> when we built car stereo amps years ago, we, for fun, put meters on one model and everyone made us change all the models to have meters. Now, unless you're in the trunk of the car, you can't see the meters. And if you're in the trunk of the car, that's probably not a good thing, right? Right, you're not there for the meters. <laughs> right, exactly. But we ended up having to put meters on everything. Uh, so <laughs> You have to be careful what kind of cool things you do or else you're going to end up doing it for everybody. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Yeah. So we came out with a line of equipment that's for the opposite person of the person who wants to hide the equipment in the basement. The person who wants to show off their equipment. I've got Macintosh. I've saved up my whole life for Macintosh. I want to look at my Macintosh all the time. No one wants to see a bunch of ugly black chassis. So these things just look unusual and they look really cool. Um, I call them the toaster ovens. To me, they look a little bit like a toaster oven, black and chrome and all that. And, um, you have to see them in the flesh and they're just the neatest thing. They make a statement that we're gonna put in our literature, Macintosh ended up liking this, I came up with. They, when you see these new models, you know a serious music lover lives here. That's the statement they make. So that's going to be that's the trademark statement. on these new models. And, and if someone is purchasing Macintosh, I mean, that's really what they're trying to say, right? Right. Absolutely. It's like the person who buys a KitchenAid mixer. You know that they're a serious cook. And I stole my line from them. They used to say, when, when there's a KitchenAid mixer on the counter, you know serious cooks live here. That's a rite of passage in my family. When a woman gets a, a kitchen aid, we know we've, we've passed a big hurdle in life. So I look forward to that someday. Yep. I'm <laughs> the cook in the family, so I can appreciate it. That's awesome. Well, you know, one of the things that I love about the, the, the current state of Macintosh is that, you know, you've 
again, we keep coming back to this word, you don't sacrifice performance, but you really don't sacrifice anything with Macintosh. And that's what I love about the brand. Right. I know that for, for our team at Paulson's, we love that the, the sound quality, the engineering, that's never, ever going to be a question. So right. then we get to look at this product line. We get to look at this brand and say, okay, we have a client who wants this level of performance. Okay. Easy peasy. We know that's Mac. Okay. Now within that though, now you're diversifying and you're diversifying your look and your feel and what you want to communicate with these pieces for different types of clients, because right. there is no one type of high-end audio client. Um, exactly. Sometimes I think we like to think that there is, or we like yeah, to, think there isn't. One group. and you know why we can do that and other companies can't is because we're vertically integrated. Okay. So that's economics class, I think, in high Something school. Like that, yeah. <laughs> we don't buy chassis and circuit boards that are pre-stuffed and transformers. We wind transformers, we buy sheet metal and we cut it and stamp it and bend it and silk screen it and we wind our own transformers. So we can take the same basic design and offer it three or four different ways. Now, if we were any of our competitors, we'd be going to China for our faceplates and maybe to Japan for our power transformers. And these companies would say, well, the minimum order is 10,000. Well, then you have to try to make one thing that fits everyone. Correct. What we can do is do small batches of five different models. Like right now, we have, I think, six disc players. Most of our competitors don't even make disc players anymore. But there's people who have big collections of CDs or DVDs or Blu-rays or essay CDs, especially in Asia. So we make a whole line of, C of disc players for all those needs. And we can do it because we build all the parts. So it's very easy. Yeah. Macintosh doesn't like to buy things from other companies. We like to do it ourselves so we can do it the way it should be done. I love that. And it's such a chicken and the egg thing because you you have your quality and you have your your client relationship and those things just kind of cycle through and, and intertwine. And you know, I love that you're continuing to modernize with with yes. the needs of your clients as their spaces change, their demands change, things like that. You're right there to offer them the right products to fit those needs. So um, I know I'm really excited to listen to your keynote presentation and to learn more about it because I think, you know, Mac for good reason has quite the reputation. And um, I think with any good reputation comes along maybe some assumptions or some things that people um, kind of get something in their head of what that brand is or what they do, right. maybe kind oh, of yeah. finite. Um, so I'm really excited to hear about some of the things that are um, maybe an opportunity for some people to step into the world of Macintosh who didn't think yeah. that that was attainable for them and to right. think about their projects and their spaces with, with Macintosh in mind. So I'm really looking forward to it. Me too. Mm -hmm.